be to your name. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Amen. You can sit down, please. The glory of God is here. And the requirement of the Holy Spirit when it comes to the gospel requires an invasion into the impossible. Amen? The gospel and our redemptive work does not allow normal things. When it is normal things, it is human things. The God kind of things are not normal. They are supernatural. Amen? I repeat, the God kind of things are not normal. They are supernatural. Shout with me, supernatural. Amen. They are not normal. That's why in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, the Bible says here, and Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power... Is given unto me. Let's read. Uh, let's read together. Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, "Let's read one, two, three, go." Oh. Please put King James. Put my 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 King James. <laughs> let's read aloud. One, two, three, go. <clears throat> All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth hallelujah when i read this scripture i began asking myself it says all power it did not say some power it did not say a lot of power it says all power in heaven and on earth and we know god cannot lie and god can it is impossible for god to lie so when god says all power he means all power he is not saying that some power. If God has all power, that it means therefore that the devil doesn't have it. No, 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 no. I think you are not getting me. If God has power, all power, it means all power. Every power that manifestation of the devil is only empowered by the lack of knowledge of the fact that he has been defeated. I announce to you that he has been defeated. And the word of God says, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made an open show of them. Our God has disarmed principalities and power. And he alone is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He has no rival. He has no equal. He is just so mighty. Hallelujah. Tell you about he is just so mighty. He is just so powerful. Amen. I want you to see how great your God is. Because he's not a small God. He's a mighty God. You know, the greatness of our God manifests a lot with what the Lord has called us to do. One of the greatest burdens the Lord puts in our heart is what the scripture here says. Go ye therefore and teach all nations... He said, go ye therefore and do what? Let's go to verse 19. Teach all nations. He says, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now this verse is so powerful and it requires us to do it. Now, how do you do it? The question is this. When the Lord asks you to do something, he's not asking you in your own power to do it. He's asking you to do it in his power. And when you enter his power, there is no limit at which you can go. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, there is no limit. Amen. Amen. There is no limit for which you can go. Because when God calls you, he also enables you. Hallelujah. He doesn't call you and just let you the same. He enables you and he empowers you. So we began preaching and believing the Lord for miracles. And we believe the Lord. The greatest and first miracle is the miracle of salvation. I told you yesterday, we became burdened for the youth. One day I was crying out to the Lord and just praying. 
uh, let me go to the first aspect. The first aspect was we had a team of pastors who were working with me to hold crusades around the world. And we got people who were sponsoring the events. They recognized the evangelistic ministry in my life. And they wanted to, of us to go and evangelize. Um, as many nations as possible went to India. One of our events, they had over 70,000 people. It was glorious. We were just going from place to place. But something happened. One day, I was praying and the Lord spoke to me. He said, my son, I cannot give the world to one man. You alone cannot win the world. You can only win the world with the whole body of Christ. So you, so I said, Lord, but what do you want me to do? The Lord told me, I want you to go ahead and sponsor a uh, uh, hundred thousand missionaries these are not just min missionaries from your own ministry but from all over anyone called by the name of the lord and a spirit field sponsor a hundred thousand missionaries he said they will go to places that you cannot go so when I told my disciples, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel through every creature, the Lord told me, he included everyone. It's not just pastors. He did not say, hey, Benny Hinn, go to the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said, no, you and I are included. If you are a child of God, the blood of this world is on your head and you must preach the gospel. If you cannot preach, at least send others. So I gather our church, share the vision with them, share the vision with a group of pastors. Some people were not happy with me. They have never come back to the, to the group. But we started because we discovered to, to touch the nations, there is no way you can be selfish. You must, you must stand for the kingdom of God. Many of the places, take for example, Zambia, we have 35 churches that we have planted. And generally, it's $100 we give, not $50. But for, for, for Mozambique, because of the financial situation, we give $50 there because of the present. Because the money is bigger, but other nations, is $100. So, now, we began sponsoring the missionaries in Zambia. Some of the churches grew to almost 300 members. And some of them move. They, they are to split into other. Some churches are not even being sponsored because our goal is to do it for three years. Now, I started crying out to God. I said, Lord, I am, we are not able. They, 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 because the sponsoring was, we're struggling because we almost have just about 200 missionaries that we sponsor now. And I said, Lord, we need money for this thing. We're crying out. I need the monitors, please. Something is, try to correct it. We're crying out and we're asking the Lord for a miracle. Then something happened. The Lord began to speak to me. He said, I am the one. I am your source. Hallelujah. And then he drew me to something that really blessed me. And he started opening my eyes to the power of God, not only to affect your personal life but to affect your financial life and everything there is nothing like carrying the gospel to other nations and we began preaching not only preaching but we we began sponsoring these churches and the lord began moving one day i was just praying and they were counting the number of people and some of them there are over i mean thousands of them who are part of the church that we have sponsored in zambia then the, I was praying, the Lord spoke to me. He said, do you know that if you never send those missionaries, all those people will be going to hell. Because you send those missionaries to those villages, these thousands of people who got saved, because the missionaries went, will be attributed to all those who have invested to send those missionaries. Hallelujah. 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 I was so blessed. I began worshiping the Lord and praising the Lord. And then the Lord opened my eyes to something. He said, I don't want you to end there. I want you to begin to minister to the youths of this generation. And the Lord told me, revival will come with the youths. Most of the older people are stuck in their ways. I'm sorry, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for telling you the truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Do you still love me? The Lord said, most of the older people are stuck in their ways. You should go after the youth because I saved you when you were 13 years old and I set you free. Go and tell other youths that they can live for the Lord Jesus just as you have lived for me all these years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because when you save an old man, as Renard Bonke said, you save a soul. But when you save a youth, you save a lifetime for Jesus. Glory be to God. So I vowed to begin ministry to the youth. And I said, Lord, help us. Our first one was in Cameroon. We had about maybe three, three to, two, three to four thousand youth came in the Congress Hall. And we ministered there. Mozambique had about seven to 8,000 youths. We had a glorious time in Mozambique and God began opening the doors. But the problem with the youth conference is that youth do not have money. <laughs> so you need a miracle. So I go to those youth conferences. In one of the ones in Mozambique, our first offering from 8,000 youths was like over $500. I look at them and say, your parents could not give you one one dollar, one one dollar. <laughs> but because if they brought just one one dollar, it would have been eight thousand dollars to help us sponsor the event. Because those conferences are expensive. But I started asking God, Father, we need a miracle. We trust you for miracles. We believe you for miracles. And it has been miraculous. From one miracles after the other, one miracles after the other. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So I'm announcing to you today, the miracles that we are praying for, is not just that cancer disappear, it's that the whole world must be saved. The, Jesus died for the whole world. We are entering into a new type of miracles. Go here into all the world. It needs a miracle. It needs a people giving to the cause of Christ. We will win the world for Jesus. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. Amen. And the Lord told me, go after the youth, minister to them. The demons of this world, the, the demonic people of this world are going after the youth. The transgender are going after the youth. The homosexuals are going after the youth. All the evil going after the youth. Now, go back to the youth. And then I began to study. You know what I discovered? I discovered that 90, that in every church, they did a study. And they discovered that 95% of every member of churches worldwide came to the Lord before the age of 39. 95% of every member. Who here came to the Lord after 39? Put up your hand. After the age of 39. If you came to the Lord after the age of 39, put up your hand. My God, one, two, three. Four. Four. Are you seeing it? It's even, year is even more than 90. <laughs> so 95% of all those believers on earth came to the Lord before the age of 39. Then I came to one conclusion. If we don't win them while they are young, we may as well consider them lost. Amen? Tell your neighbor, if you don't win them while they are young, consider them lost. 95% of all. When I asked in Mozambique, there were a few people. I came to a church, I asked, and there were four or five people who came to the Lord after 45. And uh, after 39. And you know what I discovered? That even among those ones, there were one or two who backslid and came back after. <laughs> after. So in reality... The, the window of opportunity to win our world for Jesus is to go after the children and the youth. Church of God, wake up, go after the youth and after the children. If we lose them, we may lose them forever. And a man of God told me, oh, we're organizing a, a conference in, in uh, uh, Switzerland. Uh, uh, no, not Switzerland. Um, well, there's one in Germany coming. But in um, Swaziland. And the man of God planning the event, we're just talking. He said, during the pandemic, that, that the youth were abandoned. I said, but, but I, I said, why? He said, because youth events are expensive. 
churches, the income reduced. So youth events are expensive. He said, but you don't play with the women event because the women give most of the offering. You should shout a shout of victory. <laughs> Do you know that when you have a couple, I don't know if it is your experience and Dr. Miles, when you have a couple struggling, do you know that generally it is the man who is struggling to give? There are some peculiar cases, but generally women are the ones. Seven women followed Jesus. They were the ones giving to the ministry of Jesus. Where were the men? So therefore, the women's meeting continued because they were sponsored. But the youth meeting, they were abandoned. We are abandoning the people for which revival for the future stands. They are the ones we must spend more money on them because they are the church of the future and they must go to win other youth before it is too late. It is wickedness to abandon the people for whom all revival for the future stands on them. But we vow to go after the youth. And then the Lord spoke to me about a certain thing that changed my life. And the Lord said, He said, I told Abraham, I will bless you. And I will make you a blessing. And he said, it means that redemption does not allow you to be normal. You must be so blessed that you become a blessing. Let me tell you, having just enough money for you and your household is selfishness. You must be so blessed that you become a blessing. If you are not yet a blessing, the Abrahamic blessings and the covenant of, of Abraham have not yet been manifested in your life. For it to be manifested, you must become a blessing to this world. Hallelujah. If you are not a blessing, something is wrong. And then came this conference. And I was praying, it has been for years, I will share with Pastor Benny Hinn how he has influenced my life. He changed my life as a young man. An incident that happened, I will share that. But, and I've been praying for of both, over 30 years. It took 30 years to get you and Pastor Benny here. <laughs> I said, Lord, grant me an opportunity to meet this man and to invite him who has changed our, my life forever. And God finally granted the opportunity. Now the battle began. We have not had a serious problem organizing a conference like this one. It was as if all hell broke loose. To get people to register for a conference when you are inviting the most popular and most well-known man of God on earth today was like war. Professor this event will get a thousand people register easily. I said, but this one, what is happening? We prayed and cried out to God and the rest. And the Lord spoke to me. I am taking you through a new bird. And the battle is fierce. Understand you are dealing with a battle here. Because I am breaking you into the miraculous. And I'm breaking this, the people who come to the conference, into the miraculous. Miracles will begin to happen. And Satan knows it. That's why he wants to hinder people from coming. So that they don't experience the miraculous. He said, there will be an impartation of miracles and men will live from here, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, because they will never be the same in that meeting. That's why Satan, Satan has made sure, even though it is Pastor Benny coming, yet he has made sure they don't come. So I said, Lord, if that is the case, what do we do with the bills? <laughs> because I started pondering I need to for the first time I thought to myself to call. let me just call Pastor Linda I said this thing is not working can we just cancel it the bills were rising we have spent uh, going to $140,000 and I was crying out to the Lord I said this money I, I was just seeing my my missionaries I said Lord this will be about about 10,000 missionaries <laughs> planted churches planted why are we spent crying out the lord said go ahead and do it and he told me if it is my will it's my bill hallelujah 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 i started crying dr mize did not even know what i was going through when i sat there 
as they were, you, you were enjoying yourself, I was just thinking about the bills, the bills, and uh, the bills, the bills. And then Pastor, our youth pastor, Pastor Golua, came and, and constantly comes to tell me that we need this, that we need to pay this, we need to buy this. I said, when would he stop buying things? <laughs> So, so I sat there. I said, Lord, we have not even considered what shall we, all this investment, what shall we even bless the servants of God and the rest? I was crying. I was just crying to, out to God. And then when, when he spoke and he said, the Lord has told him that there are over 200 people who should give $1,000. I said, that message is surely from the Lord. You may not have liked it, but I liked it. When you are suffering, you hear anything that comes for to help you, you shout, glory! <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I just picture, I say, oh God, nobody told him what we have spent. Nobody told him what, what we are struggling with. And yet he said that. And then the Lord spoke to me, have I not told you? My work, my bill. He said, never look at finances when it comes to the God of Abraham. He's not a poor God. He's a rich God. I have, I own the universe and I own everything. Stop looking at finances. My will, my bill. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then I began to worship God. I got some relief. I could sleep. Let me tell you, I was dreaming in the night bills. <laughs> You don't know what pastors go through sometimes. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we are building a house. We are building a church. It requires six, $6.5 million. And I started thinking, I said, Lord, don't get us to the level where we start using the money that we want to build to, to pay for conferences. Help us, help us. So you find yourself in a pressure that you started trembling. But the Lord took away the burden from my heart last night. And the Lord spoke to me, I will bless you even with more than that. He said, the time is coming when one person will ask you, what is the bill? Give me, I'll write the check. Hallelujah. For God is raising financial blessings upon God's people. You shall be so blessed that you shall become a blessing in Jesus' name. I want to tell you, for the church to be poor is a foreign thing. We refuse to be poor. The God of Abraham blesses to the uttermost. And when he blesses you, he makes you a blessing. You must be so healthy that you are healing others. You must be so rich that you are feeding others. You must be so blessed that you are blessing others. You must own homes. And I tell you, a time is coming when we own hotels like this. Where we will not need to rent hotels. But we shall use our own hotels in Jesus' name. He is a God of miracles. We is a God of miracles. And when he calls, he empowers. And nothing empowers like finances. Except you don't know God's work. Everything costs. The other day, he said, we have to change these monitors. He said, the monitors that we are using in the church will not do. He said, how much are they? When they told me, I tremble. <laughs> But let me tell you, our God is our provider. Our God is our source. Our God is the one who provides. And he never fails. He never fails. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you people, the miracles will begin in your life. I announce to you, you will be so blessed financially that you will be asking, what do I do with it? If you don't know what to do with it, call us. We will send it to Mozambique. We will send it to Cameroon. We will send it to Zambia. To plant churches as they prepare for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will be glorified in the nations of the world in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Shout a shout of victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I began asking questions. I said, Lord, I need your power and I need you to bless so much so that there will be surplus in the kingdom of God. Amen. Tell your neighbor, there will be surplus in the kingdom of God. Because I have discovered a secret. Our finances changed when we began to give even what we did not have. 
we as a church started this mission of planting churches. When you know that the salary of people depend on you, you'll be shocked. We have almost 200 people now that we sponsor. You'll be shocked how much our, our young church gives to the world. That every time the money comes to pay the salary of those people. And Bishop Walker came to my office. For the first time, this man of God sat in front of me and wept like a baby. He said something I'll never forget. He said, you are not just planting churches. And the churches that you are planting are growing. You are feeding families. He said, a man and his wife and his children, you send them to this village, you feed them for a whole month, and in the process, the kingdom of God increases. They plant a church, and they grow, and you feed them. You are feeding families. God will bless you, and began weeping. The church must go back to church planting. Forget about just building your own kingdom. Build the kingdom of God. Build God's kingdom. That's what God is interested in. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to announce to you a financial miracle that is coming upon the body of Christ. And it shall begin in this place. It shall begin in this place. It shall begin in this place. It shall begin in your life. So that you are blessed with Abraham's blessing. So that you become a blessing. He said, I will bless you. And I will make you a blessing. Because remember what the Lord said. Because he was hung on the cross. He, was, he hung there. So that what happened? So that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. And that blessing of Abraham, the first statement about that blessing is what? I will bless you and I will make you a blessing. If you have the blessing of Abraham, you have become a blessing. No, no, you didn't hear me where you will have shouted better than that. If you have the blessings of Abraham, you can become, you have become a blessing. So do not accept a life of just enough to feed your family. That's not your portion. As a child of God, your God is the God of more than enough. And when he blesses, you become a blessing. And therefore, watch and see. The blessings have begun and God has begun to do wonders. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And then we began sponsoring. We already spent about $50,000 for the conference in Cameroon. He may not know that. We fly and everything, about $50,000. And I'm telling you, when you go there, you don't expect to get any money. But youth. It's the youth. And I understand why many men of God don't go after youth. I've tried it. It is investment. It is sowing. You sow all the time. <laughs> but the truth is this. A man of God in Nigeria, when he was going after the youth in the early part of his ministry, many of you know this. Or you're the poor. He was going after the youth, ministering in the, in the university. People were laughing at him. They say, you, your ministry will be poor because you don't have money. But they forget that those people don't remain youths. Many years later, those youth, some of them were governors. Some of them were business people and the rest. And that's why his church is now one of the richest church in Nigeria. Why? He went after the youth and he paid up in the future. Church of God, go after the youth. In the initial state, it may not be paying. But I'm telling you, you are sowing a seed that you shall reap. The youth will become adults one day and they will be used by God to support their ministry go after the youth it may be expensive but in the long run the church will win we shall prevail hallelujah shout a shout of victory so the question tonight people of God is do you want the God of miracles are you interested in miracles or you are just wanting to do what they call escort others on earth. I'm telling you, if you came to make history with God, God will make history with you. Hallelujah. God will make history with you. And I announce to you the miracles to win our world. We need finances. And I'm now believing that poverty is not a blessing. It's a curse. I was ministering in South Africa. I realized there that poverty is a curse. And it's a demon. You know what happened? It was an open door crusade. And I said, the Lord told me, I've come to deliver people here from poverty. 
So I said, Lord, what do I do? The Lord told me, call them and command the demons of poverty to come out. I called, almost everybody came out. When it's poverty, you, almost everybody is poor. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> so they came because I'm telling you, they came so many. You know, they, they say the highest level of poor is poor. P-O-R-O. You are so poor that even the zero leaves you alone. <laughs> So you are poor. So when I called the people to come forward, everybody came and the Lord was said, I said, demon of poverty, come out. I was shocked. Hundreds of people were vomiting, falling all over the place. I said, Lord, your poverty is a demon. I was shocked. As I was ministering to the people, the Lord told me, I've come to set people free from poverty. And I want you to go and join the crowd. I said, Lord, I am the minister here. The Lord says, you have that spirit too. You need to be delivered. I said, Lord, I was bargaining on the stage with the Lord. I said, Father, can you deliver me in my hotel room? <laughs> the Lord said, no. This, this manifestation will not be repeated. My glory is here to set you free. Give the microphone to your wife. Join the crowd. So I called my wife. I said, the Lord just told me poverty is one of my issues. <laughs> I need to be delivered. So I went and joined the crowd. And my wife took the microphone. And began praying and telling you she's a fiery woman. She began to command the demons to come out. And you know what happened? I was delivered from the spirit of poverty. From that day, things begin to change in my life and in our church. It is as though I was hindering the church. We began being blessed. God is opening the doors. We are planting missionary. We are hosting conferences. And the Lord is providing. And the Lord is opening doors. Oh, how good is our God. How majestic is his name. Lord, we worship you. How excellent is the name of our God. You will be praised forever. You will be exalted forever. Jehovah, we worship you. Great is your name. The one who dwells in an inapproachable light. Full of glory. Full of power. You will be exalted forever we love you we worship you in jesus name hallelujah to the king hallelujah to the rock of ages hallelujah to the mighty god hallelujah to the one who is exalted forever king of kings and lord of lords we give you glory in jesus name amen let me tell you on saturday we deliver people from the spirit of poverty Saturday morning is deliverance morning. Don't miss. Don't plan to come for the evening service. Make sure you are there. Every demon that is tormenting you will make sure you don't come to that service. But announce to you, they are all going. In the name of Jesus. We have seen people delivered from the demon of cancer and the cancer disappear. Many diseases are demonic. But God has come to set captives free. Hallelujah. I want you to stand up and begin to give God the glory and begin to worship him. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. We worship you. We honor you. We glorify you. Let your name be exalted. Let your name be praised. I want you to begin to pray spiritual warfare prayer and tell the Lord your season for visitation has come your season for freedom has come begin to shout and shout with authority the worship team please come forward Hiroko Sharaka Doruba Kadaraba Sharaba Rokura Kadaraba Kashara Karobaka Rokodaraba Kashara Karobaka Rokodaraba Kashara Karobaka The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. We worship you, we honor you, we thank you, Lord, for your glory, for your power. You will be praised, you will be adored. Hallelujah to the great God, hallelujah to the living God, hallelujah to the most high God, King of kings and Lord of Lords. 
Lord. Rakadoroba kashara karoba ka. Rakadoroba shanda daroba kashara ba. Roko rakadaroba kashara karoba ka. Roko daroba kashanda daroba kashara ba. Roko daroba kashara karoba ka. Roko daroba kashara karoba ka. Roko daroba kashara karoba ka. Indo roko shara karoba ka. Rakadaroba kashara kadaroba kashara ka. We praise you. We worship you. We honor you. We glorify you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah to the king. Hallelujah to the holy one. We bless your holy name. In Jesus name. Amen.